Praise the Lord. This is another day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Won't you magnify the Lord with me on this morning? It's time for worship, saints. Good morning, Life Church family and guests. 
I'll be reading the scripture this morning from Romans chapter 15, verse four, and I'll be reading the message version. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Have a great Sunday and a great week. Good morning, everyone. Let us go to the throne for prayer. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We praise you, we honor you, and we bless you, Lord God, because you are an awesome God. You are a wonderful God. We thank you for your love that you pour out to us each and every day. Father God, we recognize that we live, breathe, and move through your very being. So Lord God, continue to bless us, continue to show us your way. Father God, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for the unconditional love that you have given us each day. So, Lord God, we bless you for that. Father God, I'm asking this morning that you just heal, deliver, and set free. Father God, stop by the hospitals on this day. Father God, and touch someone's heart, touch someone's love, lungs, touch someone's body that they may be restored, Lord God. Heal them in the name of Jesus. And Father God, for all those who are in bondage, just not living according to your will. Lord God, we ask that you just touch them. Lord God, show them the right way. Show them direction, Lord God, that they may live their best lives through you. Father God, we praise you and honor you for that. Lord God, we thank you for this country. We thank you for this state. We thank you for this city, Lord God, that you are restoring. Lord God, we thank you and we ask that you continue to move in it, Lord God. Send your spirit through it, Lord God, that we may all be living better lives, Lord God. We love you and we adore you for that. Father God, we ask you to bless the house of life church, Lord God. Bless Pastor Hall. Bless Sister Alda Vanessa Gray, Lord God. Continue to show them directions that they continue to teach us, Lord God. Continue to bless them from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, Lord God, that they will be blessed, their families will be blessed, that you will bless them always for doing your will. Lord God, we know and recognize that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So Lord God, we bless you for sending your son to sacrifice his life for us on this day, every day. So Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the angels that you have pointed to us this morning. We say good morning to our angels who watch over us each and every day, seeing that we have no hurt, harm, or danger, and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper because we know that is your will, God. So we thank you. Satan, we serve you notice on this day that everything that you have sent to kill, steal, and destroy, we bind it up in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us. So everything that you have sent, we rebuke it and we put it under our feet where you belong. So in that, we praise God. We honor God. And we just, uh, he's an awesome God. And we just want to give him praise to throughout this service today, throughout our day, just knowing and recognize that we're living life in him. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Awesome morning, Life Church and guests. If you have the vision, I'm here to recite the vision. If you can recite it with me, Life Church is called to be a relevant, a relevant, progressive, safe place for persons of direct, diverse backgrounds to learn, implement, and share the principles provided through Jesus Christ to address, overcome, enjoy, and thrive in every area of life. Be blessed. Good morning. I would like to take this time to welcome all of our guests. If you're a first time guest, if you're a returning guest, I would like to say welcome. We don't take it lightly that you decided to worship with us today. We know there you had numerous options of places to virtually worship. So we're thankful that you decided to join the life experience. And I promise you that you won't regret it. A life church, let's do what we do. Let's love on and welcome all of our guests. Have a great day.
Well, good morning to everyone. I pray that you are doing well. And I want to, again, thank you for joining us this morning on the Life Experience. We're grateful to God for the fact that you decided, as Sister Courtney said, to stop by and to worship with us. We are fully aware that there are so many places that you could have gone to worship this morning. And the fact that you decided to worship with us does not escape us. We are grateful to God for it and for you. And we want to thank you for joining us. To all of the Life Church family out there, I want to say good morning to you. I hope that you've had a good week. And if you did not have a good week, know that we are praying for you and that in spite of the fact that you did not have a good week, we can still celebrate the fact that we do serve a good God and we thank him for that. Listen, I'm going to ask you the same thing I ask you every week at the beginning of each of our broadcasts to do three things. Number one, Make sure that you utilize this as an opportunity for fellowship. I recognize we're not in person. We can't hug each other. We can't touch each other. But at this very moment, you can speak to somebody. You can show love to someone by putting comments in that comment section, speaking, saying good morning, saying hello, letting people know that you are present with us today. And I promise you, just as it's a blessing to me, it'll be a blessing to someone else. Secondly, I want to make sure that you maximize the opportunity now and moving forward to be a digital disciple. Listen, we've got to get acquainted with the fact that this will be one of the formats that we will worship in for years to come. Even after we are in person, I'm still going to be asking you to share our online experience with people. And so I want you to get disciplined. We talked about that uh, this past Wednesday, disciplined at the reality that it is now incumbent upon us to share this on our social media sites. So go ahead, click that share button right now and make sure that you share this opportunity, this experience, this encounter with God with the people that you're connected to. I wanna let you know that people are being blessed because you are sharing what God is doing here at Life Church. And that is a reality that you and I have to thank God for because literally what it means is that what God is doing in our midst, he is not allowing it to stop here. It is going beyond us and he is blessing other people as well. And then thirdly, I wanna make sure that you stay engaged throughout this entire encounter. It is imperative that we don't just sit back. I know it's been over a year that we've been doing this, but we can't just sit back. Make sure that you engage, which means if you are online, use the comment section to say something, give thumbs up, give hearts, make sure that you say amen or thank you or whatever in the comment section that shows that you are being blessed and that something is touching you in this experience. I believe that we serve a God who cannot be limited to one way of being worshiped or one way of us experiencing him in our lives. And so we wanna thank you for joining us. Listen, I wanna make sure that we stay connected. If you are not a member of Life Church, and if you are a member of Life Church, I wanna encourage you to make sure that you download our app. It's about a couple of months old now, and listen to me, it is one of the ways that you can stay connected throughout the week. It is literally Life Church Anywhere. That's what we're gonna call it. Because listen, you could be anywhere and you can hop on that app and you can get a word, whether it's a word that was just preached this week or a word that was preached in the past, you can log on and you can get that word there. You can also stay connected to your life groups. You'll be able to submit prayer requests there. And it's one of the ways that you stay connected with us. It is important that we utilize every avenue we can to make sure that we stay connected to one another because we win and we overcome because of our relationship with God and with one another. So make sure that you download the app today. Immediately after our worship encounter, we're going to go into prayer. We believe in prayer here at Life Church. And if you're in need of prayer, regardless of what the reason is, I want you to log on to our virtual prayer room and get connected to someone today. Everybody who logs on will be able to go into a virtual prayer room of their own with an individual and they'll be able to pray one-on-one, -on -one. whether you call in or whether you hop on Zoom and you access it that way. We know that prayer works. We know that we all need prayer. If you need prayer today and you want to pray with someone, there will be intercessors and leaders online to pray along with you. And we encourage you to do that. Listen, we don't just meet together on Sundays, but every Wednesday and every Friday, we meet together as well. And so I want you to make sure that you join us on Wednesday nights for our live sessions. And that's at seven o'clock. And then on Friday nights, we join together for our weekly prayer call and check-in. Elder Graves 
leads this effort. And I am just ecstatic about the way that people are joining in to make sure that they participate and sharing the gift of God with each and every one of us. And so you'll be able to join, you'll be able to hear from God, not just through prayer, but through the encouragement of here it is, not just the gifts that have titles, but the gifts that have the title that's most important in each and every one of our lives. And that is the gift of being called a child of God. And so I encourage you to log on on Friday nights and to participate in that prayer call. Listen, family, this week, we are going to be connecting with our Mid-Atlantic Regional Full Gospel family, and I need you to be there. Here's what I need you to do. If you've not done it already, I need you to log on to Eventbrite, whether you do it uh, right after worship or whether you do it later on today, I need you to hop on to Eventbrite and I need you to register. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. Log on, register. And then on Thursday night and Friday night, I want you to join us on Facebook and it will be on the international Facebook page for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship where you'll be able to join us. Now hear me, we're gonna have our prayer call at seven and then we'll go into the summit after our prayer call because we wanna make sure that we can connect as a family and then hop right onto Facebook and collect, connect with our larger family of the Full Gospel Baptist Church. I'm excited about what God's going to do. We're going to hear good preaching. We're going to hear good singing. We're going to see good dancing. We're going to worship together and we're going to connect and we're going to hear about what's next. I want you to meet me online Thursday night and Friday night. Remember to register today. It is important for us to make sure that we connect to something that's larger than us. Today, I want to take just a moment to highlight the life of one of our members who was such a great and a wonderful woman of God, Sister Johnny Mills. We are mourning her passing this morning and we are praying for Sister Courtney and Trustee Jerry this morning as well. Those of us who had the privilege of knowing her know that she was so kind, she was so loving and she had a great sense of humor. And we are grateful to God that he allowed us to have our lives impacted and touched by her. And so I want you to continue to pray for Sister Courtney, for Trustee Jerry. We'll make sure that you get the information on the arrangements and we'll make sure that as a family, we rally around them, we wrap our arms around them and we let them know that even in this, we are with them because we recognize that life is better when we do it together, especially in these moments. And so I want you to pray, send your love, send your compassion, send your empathy their way. God knows if any of you have ever been there before, it's moments like these where that will help strengthen you to get through the days, the weeks, the months that lie ahead. And so I want you to not only pray for them, but thank God for the life of Sister Johnny Mills. We're continuing to pray for one another, and we want to make sure that even as we do so, to take heed to the words that Elder Graves gives us every Friday, to make sure that if God drops somebody on your spirit, Pray for them. Stop whatever you're doing and pray for them at that moment. Pick up the phone, text them, call them, email them, whatever. Reach out to them. Let them know that you're thinking about them and that you are praying for them. Trust me, people can feel your prayers. Even if you're not present, they can feel your prayers. And so make sure that you lift each and every one of those that God lays on your heart up in prayer and let them know that you are loving on them and praying for them. I want to encourage you, if you are looking for ministry to participate in, join our media ministry. Our media ministry is expanding, and so we're going to need people who are interested hearing in learning and interested in doing. You may not have the skills yet, which means you may have to go through some extensive training. If you are willing to go through that training and you want to participate, I want to ask you to reach out to MIT Chanel today and to let her know that you are interested. We are trying to do everything that we can so that our media ministry will be robust online and we're preparing for what it's gonna look like when we're back in person. We want to make sure that we represent God well, we wanna represent Life Church well, and we wanna represent you well. And so if you're interested, reach out to MIT Chanel today and let her know you're interested in joining our media ministry. Those are our announcements for today. I'm gonna to ask you to make sure that if you miss any of them to hop online or go to our app, you'll be able to get that information there about things that are coming up. And we wanna make sure 
that we keep you informed about what's going on. It is now time for us to worship God through our giving. And there are four ways to give here at Life Church. We know that we now have our Life Church anywhere app. You can have Life Church wherever you go now. You just got to download it and get it on your phone. Download it and get it on your tablet. You can do that, travel with Life Church, and you can give all on the same app. And it's a secure app. So you can give using the Life Church app. You can also hop on the Givelify app, which many of us are familiar with. You can go online to our website and you'll be able to give there. Or if you'd like to send a check, you can send a check in the U.S. mail to P.O. Box 11687, Baltimore, Maryland, 21229. Again, that's P.O. Box 11687, Baltimore, Maryland, 212. To nine. Right now, we're going to prepare to give to God. I'm about to hop on the app and I'm going to give. And as we do so, I'm going to ask you to make sure that you make sure that you're giving. Our tithe is a requirement. Hear me. If you are seeing God bless you with income, 10% of it belongs to God. I need us to make sure that as we have over the course of the last year, that we stay diligent in our giving. And so please don't slack up now just because things are beginning to open up. Make sure that you stay disciplined in this area. If it's not your Sunday to tithe, I'm gonna ask you to give an offering based on whatever God lays on your heart. You give your offering out of thanksgiving and gratitude. You give your tithe out of obedience. Today, you're operating out of one of the two, obedience or thanksgiving, but whatever it is, let's all hop online right now, write out that check, and let's give. I'll be back in just a couple moments.
Well, I hope that you recognize and understand that God has a plan for all of your problems. He will do something to blow your mind. Whatever you're dealing with, guess what? God is involved and he's aware. And so I pray that you'll take some encouragement in those words and in the song that we just heard today. I want to thank you for every gift that you gave. And I want you to know that we are appreciative for the fact of that each and every one of you have been so diligent in your giving and we thank God and acknowledge uh, your efforts in that area. Listen, we're preparing now for the word of God and we thank God for his word. We recognize that it is instrumental to our growth. We thank him for every other area of ministry and the fact that they all work together for our good. And it is his word that he says he sent to heal our land and today, Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you are going through, I want you to know that there is a word from God and there is one who's going to deliver a word of God to each and every one of us. I'm so grateful to God that he has blessed and tremendously filled Life Church with persons who are gifted in so many areas. And one of the ways that God shows it is by the way that he uses us in our individual and our collective ways. And this morning, we're gonna have one of our ministers come and bless us with the word of God today. I wholeheartedly believe that God places gifts in the church around his people so that they can be graced and groomed by the gifting that God has sent to them. And God has gifted us like church. You are a gift from God. And I don't want you to forget that in whatever capacity you serve. You're a gift from God, and I want you to never forget that. Today, we're going to have one of God's gifts. Give us and deliver to us the word of God. She comes to us in the person of Minister Leslie Lewis. All of us who are part of Life Church, whether you are a virtual member or in-person member, whether you're a new member or whether you are a member who's been with us for the last couple of years, you're going to be blessed by her ministry, and I'm grateful to God that he has connected me to her and has blessed me through her because of her yielding and her submission to God. I want to ask you this morning to get your Bible, to get your tablet, to get your phone, whatever it is you're going to use, and I want you to prepare your hearts and your minds for a word from God today that is going to challenge you, that is going to charge you, and that is most importantly going to change you. I want to present to you Minister Leslie Lewis. Good morning, Life Church and guests. First, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. I am nothing without him. I give honor to my pastor, Pastor Charles Hall. Thank you for this opportunity on today for allowing me to speak. To my assistant pastor, to the leadership, to the ministers, and saints of Life Church, thank you. On this morning, if you can be kind and go with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, I will be reading verses five through eight. Chapter 13 in Hebrews, verses five through eight. I'm reading from the New King James Version this is the reading of God's word. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Father, I thank you 
I honor you, Lord God. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I ask you right now to set Leslie down, hide her behind the cross, Lord God. Use her in a mighty way, Lord God. Speak through me, Lord God. Fill me up with your words, Lord God. Fill my mouth, Lord God, so that your word would go forth, that it would touch someone on today, Lord God. It will save them, heal them, and deliver them. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do, Lord God. Let your word speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 7. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. I would like to take this text on today. Are we listening? Are we listening? As we left 2020, and enter into 2021. There were many people who suffered a hard and challenging year. COVID-19 has affected millions of victims. The latest data states that more than 152 million cases that have been confirmed with more than 3.19 million deaths accredited to COVID-19, making it one of the deadliest or deadly pandemics in history. During the pandemic, people lost their parents, spouses, children, relatives, friends. And on top of that, people were getting sick by the minute due to the coronavirus. The pandemic has resulted in an economic crisis all over the world. Hundreds of millions of people lost their jobs, investment, and savings, even their homes. Not to mention the issues of mental disorders. The shelter in place for more than 10 months has also resulted in many people experiencing cabin fever and depression. Under those circumstances, many people were gloomy on New Year's Eve, feeling sad and anxious, entering into a new year, 2021. They were reminded of the bitter experiences of 2020. Although 2020 will be remembered at as having a tremendous turmoil and challenges, we can be thankful as we set our minds and hearts on the Lord. We can stand firm in his promises, but are we listening? Here in the book of Hebrews, the epistle was written to wavering Jewish believers, encouraging them to stand fast, in their faith, the writer points out overwhelming superiority of Christ that has experienced under the law. What was offered to them, Christ, was so much better than that was what, excuse me, that what was promised under the Mosaic economy. They should never consider turning back. The author dwells on the incompatible glory of the person and work of Christ. Here in the text, the writer lists practical commands for faithfulness and service to others, to strangers, prisoners, those who are suffering. We are also warned about the love of money. Perhaps the readers were seriously struggling in these areas, even as many professing believers struggle today. Many dysfunctional backgrounds struggle to determine which 
behaviors and attitudes are acceptable. God clearly stands, guides us, standards, I'm sorry, guide us. We can be confident that God, presence, and power are available to help us practice the standard for living right. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is saying, I have everything you need. We need to trust in his promise because he is enough. Be bold to believe for he has. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Everything we need, God has it. He has everything we need. Philippians 4 and 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus not just a little, the big things as well. He has everything, all your needs, including today. It is because of God's blessing and grace that is keeping us. Are we listening? He is guarding and protecting us from harm and danger, giving us strength when we, was, when we are weak and strong. He is still a comforter, and help us when we were in trouble and when we was facing the biggest challenges ever, being in a pandemic. God has taken care of us 365 days through a pandemic. God's presence and promises has taken care of us and he wanted us to stay focused through this pandemic with our hearts and minds on his grace and faithfulness and do not focus on the hardship and the bitter experiences that we was going through and still is going through. Let all your experiences that have occurred this past year and the beginning of this year become a valuable experience that will make you wiser, more careful, stronger, and continue to grow in the Lord. We were bent, but not broken through this pandemic. We may feel as though we was in it by ourselves. God said, no, I am right here with you. I walk with you through this pandemic and I need you to continue to lean on me as we go through this and come out of this. Are we listening? So, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I would not fear. What can man do to me? This brings me to my first point. God is our helper. In Deuteronomy 31 and 6, God said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This was Moses reminding the people that God will be with you or with them in a battle. Just as he has written, just as he has been with them in the wilderness against shine and awe. We don't have to worry. God is our helper. God is still in charge. It's not about man nor job title nor about the status that the people place on us. It's about God. This was God's plan, not man's plan, but it was God's plan. Before the pandemic, a bunch of stuff would happen to us every day, whether it was a blessing, something bad, or we were simply just frustrated, or we was in a state we was just unhappy. Sometimes or most days, when we are going through the motions and nothing big is happening at the time. As believers, we need to stay focused, stay on track with God's plan, no matter what, because God is still at work all of the time. In the Message Bible, Psalms 41 and 6, 
God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. Means he is a helper. He is a helper. His help is reliable. We may not see it. He is our helper even when we do not heed to those warning signs. However, there are circumstances, there are challenges we must think about and remember who plan is it? God's plan. So will the plan change? No, absolutely not. Remember, if you want the plan or the circumstances to change for the good, we must heed to the voice of God. Are we listening? Remember those who rule over you, who has spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct, many of us may have difficulty dealing with authority figures. Notes like our bosses and directors. Guess what? God will use them to speak a word in your life. However, we don't receive it at times, if I can be honest, because we don't like them. We don't care for them. So guess what? Are you listening? We sometimes ignore our spiritual leaders as the same because we don't care for them. We don't like them. But guess what? On the other hand, we need to remember the importance of the leaders in our life, especially those who are the godliness and are concerned about our spiritual growth. Remember, there are people in our lives who want us to grow personally and spiritually. They want greater things for us, but we must want it too. God is not going to put leaders in our lives and around us to harm us, but to enhance us to a greater destiny. In the long run, are we listening? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This brings me to my second point. God will never change. This is one of the most powerful verses in all the scriptures and one of the most Christians scriptures that they know by memory or at least recognize as being from the New Testament. Jesus Christ will never change no matter what the circumstance or the situation may be. Jesus does not change. He is immutable. Whatever the problem may be, Jesus seek, call on his name. What an amazing name, it carries so much power. There is no other name. Jesus Christ is totally consistent and trustworthy. He will always be there for us, no matter what. As that kind of God, friend, mother, brother, and sister. But guess what? God is not fickle like man. Man will change on you in a minute. Man will say, call me if you need me. I got you. I'm your ride and die, or I'm all the way with you. But when you need them, they are gone or cannot be found. Remember this, God is the same all the time. And I suggest we continue to lean on him. Christ deserved to receive a new covenant, a new covenant with new sacrifices. Praise him for who he is and what he has done for you. Everything he has done for you during this pandemic, everything he has done for you when we was not in a pandemic, everything, praise him. God works of service and sharing with others in need. Continue to put your faith in Jesus daily. No, you can entirely trust him who is the same yesterday and forever. As Jesus spoke to the disciples in Matthew 28 and 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As I close here, <clears throat> excuse me, here is a question. Did we listen? Throughout 2020, knowing that the year will go down in history with a tremendous turmoil and challenges we had to face. 
under those circumstances, being a believer, did we enter into his presence of our savior? Did we set our minds and hearts on the Lord? Did we express humanity in the action like Christ Jesus to all people during the Corona season and beyond? Knowing that during this pandemic, people have struggled, people are struggling and still is. We all are struggling. Whatever the problem we may be facing, if you continue to call on the name of Jesus, hmm, the one who has the power to renew and bring healing into your life, the power of Jesus' name will bring comfort and strength to you and to those in need. He gives comfort to those in the hospital room, emergency room, funeral parlors, even in the classroom, to those who even would buy the bedside of those persons who were passing away. God is faithful. He is always faithful and will always be faithful. He is your provider. He is your bank account. God can and will rise above all your situations, but there will still be hard times. We will still have to go through, but not alone. Even losing a loved one, God is still there. Losing a job, God is still there. Losing our homes, God is still there. Why? God has given us many reasons to allow storms in our lives. Here are three things we should do even in a pandemic and after. We should turn to God in prayer. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. James 5 and 13. We find endurance and patience. Not only that, but we will rejoice in our suffering. Knowing that suffering produces patience and endurance. Romans 5 and 3. We learn that this world is not our home for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we are also eagerly to wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3 and 20. We are still here and we have work to do. We don't need the reason why he allowed this pandemic to happen, but know this, I remember these words from a song, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives, our fear is gone. I know who holds my future and life is worth the living just because he lives. God lives in us. Always keep your ears pressed to his lips and listen for his voice. Keep your eyes look towards the hills for with cometh our help and know that our help comes from the Lord. Always, 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 always seek his presence. He will supply every need, remove all the fear, supply the resources of people, and never leave you nor forsake you in the midst of a pandemic. Are we listening? Be blessed, Life Church. Amen, and God bless you, Minister Leslie, for that dynamic word that is causing us all this morning to think. One of the things that I think that is so unique and so great about the message this morning is that it causes us to think about this here. There's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is just proof that your auditory system is working and accurately transmitting the sound. But listening, don't miss it, is the reaction and the response that we use and we follow because of what we heard. God says to us, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You can hear that, but the question is, are you listening to that? Because the reality is that if you are listening, then you have to go to him. You cannot go to friends and family first. They will be there. God will allow them to be there and send them to you. But he says, come to me first. If you're 
having trouble in your finances or in your body, if your health is not doing well, if your mind is overwhelmed by the circumstances of life, I want you not just to hear, but to recognize what Minister Les Leslie said today. Are we listening? What's been your reaction and what's been your response? Not because of what you see and what you hear. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is not just about hearing. It is about a corresponding action, which shows that we're listening. Today, what you hear, some of you out there, may be God letting you know that it is time. Now is the very moment where he wants to move you into the life that you've been dreaming of, the, the life in flickers of dreams and hopes you believed you can live, and you can. But in order to get there, you've got to say yes to God. And if you today are ready to submit your life to him, here's all you have to do. Pray these words with me. Say, Lord, today I admit that I've not been living on the level you designed me to live. And today I'm ready to commit myself to your way, to your standard, and live the way you want me to live. And so today I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart, I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved, and I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And as a result, I know that because of my confession and because of my belief, right at this very moment, I can declare that I am saved. My brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer, you, according to the Bible, are saved. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening to the fact that God wants you to live a better life than the one that you're living? And he wants you to live it not alone, but along with him and those who he will send your way. And if you prayed that prayer today, there are two things I need you to do. Number one, you got to get connected to a church where they believe and love God. They teach about him and will show you how to live the life God has in store for you. And they're going to love on you. The second thing I need you to do is I need you to email me at pastor at mylifechurchmd.com and let me know that you prayed that prayer with me and let me know that you made a decision to follow God. And if you're out there and you're looking for a church home, we welcome you with open arms. We're preparing to go into our virtual prayer rooms and I want you to meet us there so that we can pray for you. Whether you need help listening, whether you just need help standing, whether you just need help to get through the upcoming week, we wanna pray with you because we believe God with you and we love you. To all of you out there, including our guests and my Life Church family, know that I love you, I miss you, and I cannot wait until we gather together again, whether virtually or in person, to worship our God together. Have a great day, everyone.